Hello, and welcome back to The Crime Reel. For this week's true crime narration, we shall be looking at the life of Ronald Shanabaga. Ronald was born on the 25th of June 1969 in Kokomo, Indiana. He was the second child born to Richard and Carmen Shanabaga, who also had an older daughter by the name of Benita. Ronald's parents' marriage was far from happy and it is believed that his father was an alcoholic who regularly abused his wife. When Ronald was 11 years old, his parents separated and he moved with his mother and sister to a small house in Martinsville, a residential community located about an hour south of Indianapolis. Very few details about Ronald's upbringing are known. Neighbours at the time seem to have little recollection of this family. Ronald and his sister Benita both attended Martinsville High School, where they were both remembered as being quiet, polite and keen to remain unnoticed. Ronald had a low IQ and struggled academically, but eventually managed to graduate in 1989. In 1996, when Ronald was working as a bagpacker at the Kroger supermarket in Martinsville, he met a cashier by the name of Amy Parsons and the pair soon began dating. Later that year, in late September, 26-year-old Amy went on a cruise with her parents whilst Ronald remained in Indiana. Shortly after she left, on the 2nd of October 1996, Ronald's father, Richard, died from diabetes. He was 61 years old. Ronald contacted Amy and begged her to cut her trip short and return home to support him during this difficult time. However, Amy was unable to change her travel plans and so was unable to attend Richard's funeral. The following year, in April 1997, Ronald and Amy bought their first home together. It was a small three-bedroom house in Brannyfield Court, Franklin, a small community just west of where they worked in Martinsville. A few weeks after this, on the 5th of May 1997, they married in a civil service at the Johnson County Courthouse and by early the following year, Amy was expecting their first child. Ronald started working at the Goodyear Tire Plant, where his manager found him to be a good employee who was punctual, worked hard and always got on with the job in hand. On Thanksgiving Day, 26th of November 1998, Amy gave birth to the couple's baby, a boy who they named Tyler Ridge Shanabaga. Just over five months later, Ronald's mother, Carmen, died at the age of 64 after a lengthy illness. The following month, on Saturday, June the 19th, the day before Father's Day, Amy was working a late shift at the grocery store. When she returned home that evening, the house was already quiet as both Ronald and Tyler were already in bed for the night. Amy went to sleep and woke early the next morning. Ronald was already out of bed and dressed for the day. When Amy went to get Tyler from his cot, she found him rigid and unresponsive. She screamed for her husband and they phoned 911. The police arrived soon after. Baby Tyler, who was just six months old, was dead. As a police chaplain was consoling the family, Ronald made the untimely decision to give his father-in-law the engraved knife which they had bought for him in celebration of Father's Day. The police assumed that Tyler had died from sudden infant death syndrome, which was supported by the coroner's preliminary report the following day. Just two days after Tyler's death, his funeral took place at Nebo Memorial Park Cemetery in Martinsville. That evening, once Amy and Ronald were alone at their home, the events of the last few days were to take an even more shocking turn. Ronald informed Amy that Tyler had not died from SIDS, but that he had in fact killed their baby son. Amy was understandably extremely shocked, but believing that the police should only be contacted in the evenings for an immediate emergency, she remained at the house with Ronald before driving him to the jail the following morning. 
Just before 11am on the 23rd of June 1999, Ronald walked into the Johnson County Jail. The deputy on duty, Pam Pfeiffer, asked him twice if she could help him, but Ronald didn't respond. When she asked the third time, Ronald began to stutter, took a deep breath and said to the deputy, My son died of suds on Sunday. No, my son died of SIDS on Sunday. Well, that is not what really happened. I killed him. I killed my son. Over the course of the day, Ronald confessed several more times, with at least two of these confessions being recorded. He told the police how, on the evening of the 19th of June, while Amy was at work, he had wrapped the young boy's head in plastic wrap before placing him in his cot. Ronald had then made himself something to eat and brushed his teeth before returning approximately 20 minutes later to remove the plastic from the baby's body. Ronald then went to bed. During the police interviews, Ronald complained about how much his wife spent on toys for the baby. He also said that he had not wanted to hurt his child and then asked the police officer to shoot him so that he could go to heaven and be with his parents and Tyler. However, in the most shocking twist in this case, Ronald outlined his motive for the murder. He stated that he had been planning the murder for more than two years. After Amy had failed to return home from her cruise to help him mourn his father, he wanted her to feel the same agony that he had experienced after his father's death. When she didn't attend his father's funeral, Ronald devised a plan to marry Amy, get her pregnant, allow her time to bond with her newborn before killing the baby. Ronald was charged with Tyler's murder on the 24th of June 1999. He was held in isolation with no option for bail at the Johnson County Court. Despite his confessions, a plea of not guilty was entered on the 28th of June. Shortly after this, it was reported in the press that Ronald had taken out a $100,000 life insurance policy on baby Tyler. The trial date was originally set for the 30th of November 1999, but due to various legal issues and changes to both the public defender and the judge, the trial didn't actually get underway until April 2002. Ronald had been evaluated by a psychiatrist and psychologist and was deemed fit to stand trial. If found guilty of murder, his sentence would range from 45 to 65 years or, should the prosecutor seek it, life imprisonment or the death penalty. It was confirmed by the prosecutor that he would be seeking the punishment of life imprisonment without parole. Jury selection for the trial took place on the 25th and 26th of April 2002 and testimony began on the 29th of April. Amy testified about Ronald's indifference towards their son ever since his birth. She also told the court that six weeks before Tyler's death, he had suggested to her that they kill the young boy and collect the $100,000 life insurance payout. She had dismissed this idea, believing that he wasn't serious. She also stated that she hadn't recalled this conversation until the day before her testimony. His wife Amy, Ronald's sister Benita, Benita's husband, Ronald's former defence lawyer and the police chaplain all testified that Ronald had confessed to them that he had committed the crime. During these confessions, Ronald told them that Amy had not been involved and that he had put off the murder until Tyler could roll over so that his death would appear to be from SIDS. Letters which Ronald had written whilst in jail, and that include confessions about the crime, were also brought into evidence. One of Amy's friends, Wendy Heim, described how she had started to visit Amy less and less after Amy and Ronald married, as she found Ronald to be rude and controlling. She stated that Ronald did not go with Amy to the hospital when she was in labour with Tyler, as he didn't want to see his wife give birth to the brat. It was said that Ronald had never developed any kind of bond with the baby, refusing to do anything or go anywhere with his wife and young son. 
Wendy also said that Amy had told her how, during Ronald's confession, he had asked how they should spend the insurance money and whether their marriage could continue without the boy. At the trial, the defence called around 10 witnesses, including Ronald's family members and work colleagues. Their testimony contradicted the view of Wendy, stating that Ronald was a calm, polite, hard-working man who was extremely proud of his wife and son. Colleagues claimed that Ronald was not close to his father, having only reconciled with him shortly before his death, making it unlikely that he would hold such a grudge towards his wife for not attending his father's funeral. It was also suggested that Ronald lacked the intelligence to form a plan for murder which spanned almost three years. Ronald did not testify at the trial. The defence put forward the suggestion that Amy may have been involved with the murder. This was despite her never being considered a suspect in the case. On May the 7th, jurors began their deliberations and at 1pm the following day, the seven men and five women found Ronald guilty of murder. However, the jury could not reach agreement as to whether the recommended sentence should be life without parole or a prison term with the possibility of parole. The following month, the judge sentenced Ronald to 49 years in prison. This was just slightly over the minimum prison term for this crime. With a credit for the three years already served, it meant that Ronald would be eligible for parole at the age of 54. Amy and her family were outraged by this decision, believing that he should never be released from prison. The judge's reason for this was that the aggravating factor which would call for a longer sentence was that the victim was under 12 years old. However, it was felt that this aggravating factor was outweighed by the mitigating circumstances. No previous criminal record, low IQ, regret of his actions and the fact that the prosecution would never have happened had Ronald not confessed and as such a life sentence was ruled out. Ronald went on to appeal his conviction based on five points. Firstly, other than the confession, prosecutors had not shown enough independent evidence to prove that Tyler was murdered. Violations of attorney-client privilege and clergy confidentiality, the prosecution's delay in disclosing certain evidence, and finally, information that a juror had inappropriately discussed the case. On the 27th of October 2003, a three-judge appellate panel at the Indiana Court of Appeal disagreed with the defence on these five points, denying the appeal and affirming Ronald's conviction. He remains in Pendleton Correctional Facility in Indiana to this day, where his earliest possible release date will be the 30th of March 2025. A totally shocking case there. Rest in peace, Tyler. This story was suggested by S.C. Bland. Please leave any comments down below. I'm taking a family member to King's College Hospital today for an annual checkup, so I may not be able to reply, but I will read your comments. Thanks very much for listening to The Crime Reel. Stay safe. Goodbye. Psst. A small fact about Martinsville, Indiana. It's known as the goldfish capital of the world. Goodbye.